everyone. Good morning. Very warm welcome to you all this morning and to the, those of you who are joining us at home for our live stream. Welcome to our service today. Um, our service this morning is being led by Lillian Evans, who's a URC lay preacher. Welcome, Lillian. It's lovely to have you with us again this morning. Um, the notices have been up on the screen um, as you've been gathering this morning. Just one to draw your attention to, and that's a reminder that we have our congregational meeting after the service on the 10th of September, um, and uh, please do make every effort to attend if you're a member. It's always important that our meetings are core so that we can um, go through with the business of the church and discuss that. Um, the papers for the meeting will be available shortly. Um, let us turn to God in prayer and as we prepare ourselves to worship this morning. Loving God, we thank you for this time together this morning when we gather here in this church and from our homes to prepare ourselves to worship you and take a moment, a few of an hour out of our busy lives to focus our attention on you. We thank you for Lillian who is leading our service today and we pray that you will open our hearts and our minds and our ears to your word today, Lord, and help us to follow where you would lead us. Amen. Thank you for the welcome. Um, I've spoken to some people as you've come in through the door if I've caught you. Um, I won't be staying very long afterwards because we've got a church thing going on at home in Northwood, which we're going to try and get to, including lunch, which is going to be nice. <laughs> I haven't got to cook my own lunch. So our call comes from Psalm 133. In fact, it's all of Psalm 133, which is only three verses. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It's like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard of the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It's like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. I like to go through, I've got a copy of your hymn book home with the music, so I could choose the hymns I knew, hopefully, and some of you might. And the one I came was connected to some of the readings, came up as Dear Lord and Father of Mankind because we are very foolish sometimes, and I'm as foolish as anybody else. So that's what we're going to sing uh, to start our worship this morning.
Lord, we thank you that we have been able to come here to a place of calm. We know it's very busy sometimes here in the week, in a normal time. But you've given us a place to just rest in your love. And to be together. And take time to be with you. One day when the disciples were with Jesus, they asked him what he'd been doing. And he said he'd been praying to his father. And they asked him how to pray. So let's use the words that he taught to his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, our glory and yours. Amen and fear. Amen. You're going to hear a reading from, oh, I've got down here, All Aid Sharing. Has anybody got anything to share? I think they're sharing the play. I think they're playing Lego or something. I can't work out what quite they're doing. They may change their minds halfway through the service. I'm not sure. Has anybody got anything they'd like to share? Anything exciting happening? No? Not exciting, but we can remember. What's your daughter saying? Rachel. Well, we remember Rachel, yeah. Anything else exciting? Sophie. I'm her mom, the little Sophie. All right. And on Friday, she's playing a part in the new theatre. Oh, it's not new, it's, it's the Beck Theatre. It's not the actual new. They do summer projects every year. Uh -huh. And she's landed a role. Whoa. A quite key role. She's actually known this summer, but she's playing the part. On Friday, so as a family, we're all very proud. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See how she gets on afterwards. So I can ask if someone who's, who's doing the reading, uh, which is in Matthew chapter 15. Thank you. faith of a Canaanite woman. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Thank you. One of the things that I get sent with the uh, order of service is little hints of what normally goes on. So this is down, is this... Um, Looking at the old ladies, this is before the children go out, so they're out there already, but I'm sure that you'll be prepared to listen to this one. About Jesus and the woman from Canaan. Would you think that Jesus is prejudiced? 
If you asked you now, what, is Jesus prejudiced against anybody? He knows all about us, of course. It is, it is, isn't it? Which is not something that we always think of. Now, when I was a wee young thing, we used to sing a chorus in Sunday school, which is probably politically incorrect now. Jesus loves the Indian boy, bow and arrow for his toy, and the cowboy, and he loves a cowboy too, with his rope and wild lasso. Yes, Jesus loves him. Yes, Jesus loves them. Yes, Jesus loves them. The Bible tells us so. Hmm. And then it gets even worse. Big Filipino, we Chinese. Jesus loves every one of these. And he loves me as I am. Can't understand that bit. Jesus loves me. This I know. As a human being, Jesus seems to be prejudiced. But it's a result of his upbringing. Where was he born? In Judea, in Bethlehem. Where did he grow up? In Nazareth, out in the sticks. He is there from there. He is Jewish. Even on the way to Jerusalem for going up for the temple, they don't talk to the Samaritans that they meet on the way. Because the Samaritans are not us. You might remember the story of the Samaritan woman at the well. They would, the disciples didn't want to stop and talk to her, but Jesus did. So when he meets a Canaanite woman, it's a surprise that he hears her at all, let alone responds to her. She was a descendant of Canaan. Now, does anybody remember who Canaan is the son of? He is the son of Noah. So that's how far back down the family tree it goes. If you get an interest in looking up Jesus' family tree, you'll find that he is also related to Noah. Because everybody was, because Noah was the last person to survive that generation. Technically speaking, these two people were relatives. Cousins of a sort. If you've ever watched Who Do You Think I Am, Who Do You Think You Are, or Who Do You Think I Am, I can't remember the part of the television programme, they go back down the line to find out where, where you, who you're related to and where you've come from, which is very interesting. And sometimes they get back to royalty. What happens then, they get this huge sheet of paper out and say, right, that's who you're related to. And from the line of kings and queens, it always goes up the map, up the map, up the map, and you end up being related to Adam, son of God. So that's where your descendants come down through, all those names, all those variations of root, until you get to God and us. Looking in Luke chapter 3, you can find all of Jesus' relatives, probably from Mary's side, because they are different from the set of relatives at the beginning of Matthew chapter 1, which follow the kingly line, which is probably Joseph's side. But they are still related. They're both descended from David. That's about as far back as you can get before they diverge and go off in different directions. They are relatives, cousins of a sort. So when this young lady, well, I don't know if she's young, she's got a daughter, so she must be a certain age, I suppose. 
She asks Jesus for help for her daughter. And there is a saying in the community that you don't give the children's bread to the dogs. Dogs are unclean, unclean animals. You're not allowed to eat them either. It wasn't very polite. Referring to her as being a dog, well, that would sort of concern she's unclean. But because of her great faith, Jesus listened and granted her wish. Her daughter was healed. Now, we say that all those who love and serve the Lord Jesus are our family. We're all related through Jesus. Wherever we've come from, whatever we've been like, we're all related because of him. Because he is the son of the father of all mankind. In Jesus, there's no difference between east and west and north and south. We are all part of the family. And one of the things I've found quite interesting is as I've gone to other churches is how many different sorts and types of people that I meet going around. Some are very localised and some have got lots of different people there. Some are working, some are retired. Some are quite young, very few young people in the URC at the moment, as, far as I've experienced it, and some are very, getting very old. But we're all different, but God still loves us. So we come to sing a hymn, which is in Christ there is no east or west, in him no north or south. the prayer that's from this, today, this Sunday's uh, prayer in the prayer book, um, which I thought was quite interesting. <clears throat> Border crossing God. Found amongst people who do not think that they are yours. Finding faith in the stranger. You reach out and make your home 
where we might not expect. Help us to find you in a strange land. Help us to know you in a stranger. Bless us with the possibility of crossing the borders we have made This is to discover you are already there, waiting for us to arrive. Thank you, Father, that you're here and that you've brought us here too. Amen. I think at this point we take up a collection. Yeah, thank you. part of your family and we thank you for all the many gifts that you've given we offer our gifts of money to you now those gifts here on the table and those that people give in other ways we offer you all of our gifts lord our gifts of time and our money and we ask that you bless these gifts and help us to use them wisely in your service to show your love to those in our community all of those around us and to glorify your name amen Introduction to the readings. Well, these two readings, one from the Old Testament, one from the New, about God's bargain with his people, about what he expects and what he will do. So we're going to sing um, him the kingdom of God, uh, number which is, it's the kingdom of joy, is justice and joy, isn't it, the first verse? Yes. And it's about how God's justice leads to joy, which is more or less what some of the readings are. Thank you.
first reading is from the book of Isaiah. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right, for my salvation is close as hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed are those who do this, those who hold it fast, who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it and keep their hands from doing any evil. Let no foreigners who have bound themselves to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people. And let not any eunuch complain, I am only a dry tree. For this is what the Lord says. To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath, who choose what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant, to them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name and it will endure forever. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it and who hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The sovereign Lord declares, He who gathers the exile of Israel, I will gather still others to them beside those already gathered. And then moving to Romans chapter 11. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know what scripture says in the passage about Elijah, how he appealed to God against Israel? For God's gift and his call are irrevocable, just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. I always enjoy looking at the passages that Paul writes, but I don't always understand them. <laughs> Anybody here understand them all the time? No, no, it's one of those things. I had a wonderful time a few years ago. I went up to Northwood to the London Bible College, and they were running evening classes on Paul's letters. And the guy who was leading the lectures, and in fact, there were some of the students were in the, in the meeting as well, said, if you can understand all of Paul, you don't need to do your new university degree. Because <laughs> you, can, you can probably understand it. But it's hard work. So what are the rules? What are the rewards that are, we're being offered? It's all about believing and God's promise of a reward of sorts. Isaiah 56 says the rewards, the re request is that we maintain justice and do what is right. That's a good rule to have, yeah? We'll have a parliament, we'll have members of parliament, we'll have them set up laws that we need to keep and we need to do them right. Before I left home this morning, I looked up the ULES rules around here and decided, I'm okay, my car is fine. 
doing what is right. Because soon my salvation will come. My deliverance will be healed. That's amazing. It's coming soon. Now, bearing in mind that this was written to I, in Isaiah's time, which was a while ago, soon is a relative thing. Soon for God, and I say, is it one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day or something like that. It's just a time space. But it will be soon. It will be soon enough, I think, is possibly the word you might look for. If you hold fast and keep the Sabbath, not profaning it, and refraining from doing any evil, you'll be all right. And that's all the rules. You only need to look at the Sabbath. You don't have to obey all the other 365 rules that they've got earlier on in the Bible. You've just got to do one thing. Look and respect God. And listen to him. And the foreigners, well, they're allowed to join in too. In the book of Exodus and Leviticus, I think he actually says sometimes, if the foreigner within your gate wants to cut, listen to these rules and obey them, then they should be treated as you are. The Lord will not separate us, the foreigners, from his people. Hello, you joining in? And then we have the eunuchs. Well, they were considered, I think what you might call sort of like a transgender. Or, you know, this time of year, it's been a lot going on about who should be women and who should be men and who should be something else. These people had done something that stopped them creating another person. But God says, if you believe, I will give you a house and a monument and a name. Because that's what they're missing out, is passing on their name. Now, we've done a bit of family tree in our in our family, wider family, cousins have done it for us and passed the information on, and we've gone back about 200 years. We're all Evanses, that's the problem. At some point, we probably came from Wales. But we get to a very sticky point, the last Evans that we found, going back that way, when his name was either John or Jack. Now, if you're living in certain parts of London where the Welsh moved to at that time, there's hundreds and hundreds of Evanses. And there's quite a lot of people who were called John and even more people called Jack, funnily enough. And they just lost the trail. I expect we could do DNA and all that jazz, but it's a bit of a faff and I think we're probably going to go as far as we can go down that line. But if you're got a name that you can pass on to your family and their family and their family. Now, we're all right. My eldest nephew is a William Evans and he's now got a daughter who was born in April. And when my, my brother phoned up, he said, um, you're now a great auntie again. And they've called her Holly, even though it's not Christmas. Oh, okay, everybody to their own taste. So there you are. There's, there's, so the Evans name will be with her. But it depends who she marries. That name may die out there. And then pre, a few years before that, my other brother phoned up and said, our daughter's had a baby girl. And her name is actually Wilkes, because it was a girl, marry, my niece marrying another person. Interesting thing that, the, that my that, that Mr. Wilkes marrying Miss Evans, 
At one point, they were both living within half a mile of where I live now. The Wilkes family were in South Oxy, which is not an enormous place, but he went off to college in Reading, and so did she from Milton Keynes. So there you are. God brings people together. And it's an amazing thing that they're a family that respects and loves God. And they're bringing her ch their children up that way. I will give you a name better than sons and daughters. An everlasting name not to be cut off. Any foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, who minister, who love the name of the Lord, all of those who keep all those rules, the reward says, I will bring them to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. You're welcome to come to God's house. There's a song we used to sing a while ago, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. We encourage people to come and meet with Jesus, and we still do. Further on in Romans, we get something very, very similar. Somebody asked Paul, Will God reject the people? He says, well, although I'm an Israelite, pretty good, a descendant of Abraham, that's going back further, a member of the time of tribe of Benjamin, yeah, that's coming back the other way, God has not rejected his people who he foreknew. God already knew, this is what is mind-blowing, way back at the time of Abraham, in fact, probably before Abraham, what things were going to happen. And he would see where people were going and what would happen to them. But he's got to allow for the fact that we can disappoint him and go off in an opposite direction. They've killed your prophets. They've demolished the altar. I'm the only one left, says e Elijah. Well, he wasn't quite right even when he said it, but he's certainly not right now. There is a remnant chosen by grace. And if it's by grace, it's no longer on the basis of work. Otherwise, it wouldn't be grace anymore. Grace is when God gives us the things we don't deserve. And he does it because we love him. And he loves us. And as a result of that, he is also able to extend that grace to people who are not descendants of Abraham. Jesus sent his disciples out. When Jesus was sent, he was only sent, he said, to speak to the lost of Israel. But when he sent his disciples out, he sent them to the lost of everywhere. Everybody need to hear, needed to hear that message that Jesus could forgive sins and bring us to a place of grace and mercy. The kindness and the severity of God. Severity towards those who have fallen, but God's kindness provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you will also be cut off. God likes to be invited 
to be part of our lives. He holds out a hand to welcome us. He holds out Jesus' hand to welcome us. We don't have to take it. But that is the only way that he can draw us into his family. To make us one with him. To be together with him. The gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. You were once disobedient to God, but you've now received mercy because of the disobedience of those in the past. So they have been disobedient in an order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. God has imprisoned all in disobedience that he may be merciful to all. How amazing. God just wants to be our father and our friend and gave us a redeemer and gave us a life to look forward to. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the father's love? That he should die for me? that we can rejoice in his love. So we're going to sing this hymn, which I suspect you might know, number three, four, five, if you've got a hymn book.
three years ago when the same readings were being read in churches around here and elsewhere, there was a prayer written for this Sunday. Even your crumbs. God who sees us, who hears us, who answers prayer. We take example from the Canaanite woman. We persist in calling you. Even for the crumbs that fall from your table. Even when you seem silent, we cry, Lord, have mercy on us. We live in a world of urgent need where violence, injustice, suffering are all around. We call out to you, God of all understanding and truth, asking for an end to the pain. Even when you seem silent, we cry, Lord, have mercy on us. You are a God of generosity and faith who sees, hears and answers. God, who fed more than 5,000 with baskets of crumbs left over. Let your crumbs fall on us. For we know that your crumbs are more than enough. And we cry, Lord, have mercy on us. We think of our world, the environment, the wildfires, drought, rising sea levels. Lord, have mercy on those who are being affected the most. We think of the refugees who are running from war and hunger. Lord, it's hard to know what's the best to do, but have mercy on them. We pray for those who are suffering from sickness of body, mind and spirit. We think of those who are not here today. For those we meet in the street and at work and at times of rest for our neighbours, and for those we meet every Sunday here. Lord, we bless you for those we know and love, for our families. Have mercy on us. And Lord, we bring to you now the prayers of our hearts and spirit. For you know our every need. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. The Lord is aware of everything that we need and will supply all our needs. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, So we're going to see our closing hymn. Um, Holy, 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 with joy my heart. Do you know that one? Yeah. Would you like to to play it through once? So give them a hint.
Lord, as we go from this place, we ask that you would go before us, that you would lead us where we should go. Remind us to worship you at all times in all places, that your name will be glorified and that Jesus will be there to receive the praise for all his love and sacrifice for us. Holy Spirit, be with us as we go. In his name, amen.